The introduction to this video is actually a clip from a documentary which is being filmed together with a farmer in Germany who is actually the first person to make use of the Harmony Omega in agricultural applications. Right at the beginning you see me explaining to him why we've selected this one central point to apply the Harmony Omega to his cow sheds. The theory says that by using the Harmony Omega to eliminate all sorts of stress factors for the cattle, there will be not only improvements in milk quality, but also very significant improvements to the health of the cattle. Now, I want no misunderstanding here. No way am I approving of cattle being held in sheds, nor does the farmer himself approve of it. Economic circumstances force him to do so. You see, the bulk of the turnover that a farmer generates does not end in his pocket. It goes to the agricultural and pharmaceutical companies, which are often one and the same. It goes to the middlemen and the supermarket chains, and the farmer himself has to survive on EEC subsidies. There is simply no money available to employ anyone to help him with the cattle. And there's just simply no way that he can get 300 head of cattle to and from the meadows twice a day. Typically, a farmer with 300 head of cattle will spend around 60,000 euros per year that's around £53,000 or $87,000 for pharmaceutical preparations and veterinary services. If, however, by eliminating the stress to which the cattle are subjected, we can get their own natural immune systems fully functional, it should, theoretically at least, be possible to eliminate between 60 and 80 percent of these costs. Not edible, no. That would allow the farmer to employ two men to help him get the cattle mm -hmm. from the sheds to the meadows and back to the milking sheds twice a day. And this is exactly what he wants to do. Over the first six weeks that the Harmony Omega has been installed, there have been very obvious improvements both to the health of the cattle and in the quality of the milk which they produce. There is a large problem in the dairy industry of which you may well not be aware. I was until I was told about this by the farmer. And this is one of literally poisoning the cattle to get them to produce much more milk in the short term and then selling the cattle on to unsuspecting small farmers shortly before they die. The natural life expectancy of a cow living on a meadow where it's supposed to be, is 20 to 30 years. By intensive force feeding, this typical life expectancy has been going down and down and down for some decades, and is now a little under five years. How it's done is like this. You see, the natural habitat of the cow is grassland, where there is very little protein available. The cow has come up with a very clever way of compensating this, and this is part of the process of the four-part stomach. In the first part of the stomach, which is the largest part, the grass which the cow has eaten is fermented by the bacteria which live in that stomach. When the cow chews the cud, to regurgitate the contents of this first stomach, chews it and swallows it down into one of the other stomachs where it then gets processed gradually through the gut. In the cud are vast quantities of bacteria. These get digested and supply the cow with the bulk of the protein which it needs. Now, by feeding a cow grains 
and other substances high in protein, you immediately get not only a rapid buildup in muscle tissue, but also up to three times the natural milk production. Okay, so far. Now, here comes the problem. Not only the digestive system, but also all the other systems of a cow's body function upon the assumption that there will be low quantities of protein in the diet. And because there are low quantities of protein, the digestion and metabolism will produce low quantities of, for example, urea. You force feed cattle with high protein foods and suddenly enormous quantities of urea will be produced by the cell metabolism. Vastly more than the cow's natural detoxification systems can cope with. What we get is system poisoning. When the documentary is published, you'll see some gruesome photographs of this. But basically, the urea destroys the liver and the kidneys, and then the cow dies. This is a very short clip, I'm sorry about the quality, of two such cows that this farmer purchased. Now, what I am actually doing here is by using an omega to so focus my intention, I'm programming this water to specifically seek out and take up urea. This was the water that these two cows got for just eight days. And instead of dying as expected, there are already considerable improvements in their health. And we are going to continue this.